we'll begin to move into the concept of automation so we can create exciting actions with code. Automation is the use of technology to reduce human and manual effort to perform common and repetitive tasks. It allows computers to do these tasks for us so that we may get back more time in our lives to do other activities. Conditional statements are important for automation. A conditional statement is a statement that evaluates code to determine if it meets a specified set of conditions. The keyword if is important in conditional statements. If starts a conditional statement. After this keyword, we then specify the condition that must be met and what will happen if it is. We use if statements every day. For example, if it's cold outside, then we'll wear a jacket. Or if it's raining, we'll bring an umbrella. If statements are structured with the condition we want to evaluate and the action that Python will perform if this condition is met. Python always evaluates if the condition is true or false. And if it's true, it performs the specific action. Let's explore an example of this. We'll instruct Python to print an account logged message anytime the failed login attempts are greater than five. Our keyword if tells Python to start a conditional statement. After this, we indicate the condition we want to check for. In this case, we're checking if the user has more than five failed login attempts. Notice how we're using a variable called failed attempts. In our complete code, we will have assigned a value to failed attempts prior to this if statement. After this condition, we always place a colon. This signals that what follows is what we want to happen when the condition is met. In this case, when the user has more than five failed login attempts, it prints a message that the account is locked. In Python, this message should always be indented at least one space in order to execute only when the condition is true. It's common to call this first line the header and to call the actions that happen when the condition is met, the body. This condition was based on a variable being greater than a specific number, but we can define our condition using a variety of operators. For example, we can also check if something is less than a specified value, or we can check if it's greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to the value. We can also compare if something is equal to a value. When we do this inside a conditional, we need to use a special syntax. It's not just the equals sign, but a double equals. The double equals sign is an important operator often used in conditional statements. A double equals evaluates whether two objects match. It assigns a Boolean value of true when they match and false when they don't. There's one more operator we should discuss, an exclamation mark followed by an equal sign represents the condition of not equal. This operator for not equal evaluates whether two objects are different. It assigns a Boolean value of true when they don't match and false when they match. Let's more closely investigate an example that uses the double equals sign. We'll focus on an example that prints an updates needed message when a particular operating system is running. Here, we've created a condition that checks if a device's operating system matches a specific string that identifies this operating system. To do this, we'll need to use the double equals sign in our condition. When it matches, our program will print a message that there are updates needed. The operating system variable is on the left of the double equal sign. The string OS2 is on the right. If the condition evaluates to true, it performs the action that is indented in the next line of code. Here, 
if the operating system is OS2, it will print updates needed. If it's false, the message will not print. Notice how this line is indented? This tells Python that the task depends on the if statement evaluating to true. Now, let's write code that incorporates this conditional and get the results. Before we write the conditional statement, we need to assign a value to our operating system variable. We'll make this value the same as the operating system that we'll check for in the conditional. Next, we'll write the condition for our if statement and use the double equal sign to check if the operating system variable is equivalent to OS2. Now, we'll type the action that will execute if the condition on the previous line evaluates to true. We'll tell Python to print a updates needed message. Since we set our operating system variable to OS2, the print statement will execute. OK, let's run this. As expected, it printed updates needed because the value assigned to the operating system variable was equal to OS2. Sometimes, we want our conditional statements to execute another set of instructions in the event our first condition isn't true. In our example, not being true means that the device is running an operating system other than OS2. This is when we need to incorporate the else keyword into our conditional statements. Else precedes a code section that only evaluates when all conditions that preceded within the conditional statement evaluate to false. Else statements always follow an if statement and end in a colon. Let's use our previous conditional and add an else statement to it. We've included the same if statement. But this time, we set the operating system variable to contain a different operating system, OS3. Because this doesn't match the value in the condition of the if statement, the updates needed message won't print. But we can add an else statement and tell it to do something else instead. We type the else keyword followed by a colon. Then we indent the next line and tell it to print a no updates needed message. When we run this code, it processes the else statement after the if statement. Since our if statement will evaluate to false, it then moves on to the else instruction. Let's try it. As expected, it only prints the message, no updates needed. Great work. Now, we've covered how to use if and how to use else. Using conditional statements allows you to incorporate logic into your code. We just learned about conditional statements and how they can develop to allow computers to make decisions. But sometimes, we need our programs to simply count or perform a task over and over again. When it comes to tasks that are tedious, it's normal for humans to lose focus and energy. It's in situations like these where computers can be especially helpful. In this video, we'll examine how computers can perform repetitive tasks using iterative statements. An iterative statement is code that repeatedly executes a set of instructions. Iterative statements are also referred to as loops. Setting up a loop allows us to repeatedly use a line of code without having to type it multiple times. Before discussing the syntax, let's run a loop so you can experience what happens. Notice how this code printed all the numbers in the list with only one printed statement. That's a loop. There are two types of loops we'll explore, for loops and while loops. We just ran a for loop and we'll continue to focus on them in this video. Later, we'll explore while loops. For loops repeat code for a specified sequence. An example of this would be using a for loop to print every item in a list. 
for loops begin with the keyword for. For signals the beginning of a for loop. Similar to conditional statements, iterative statements consist of two main parts. The parts of a loop are the loop header and the loop body. Let's examine the for loop we just ran and use that to explore these parts. The loop header is the line that contains the for keyword and ends with a colon. It tells Python to start a loop. It consists of the for keyword, a loop variable, and the sequence the loop will iterate through. The loop variable is a variable that is used to control the iterations of a loop. The loop variable comes directly after for. A common name for it is the letter i, but you can give it any other name you want. In for loops, this temporary variable is only used within the loop and not outside of it in the rest of the code. The loop variable is followed by the in operator and the sequence the loop will iterate through. In this example, this sequence is a list containing numbers from 1 through 4. It runs each of these numbers through a specified action. We need to remember to put a colon at the end of the loop header to introduce this code. The loop body refers to the indented lines after the loop header. These represent the actions that are repeated while the loop iterates. In this case, it will print each number in the list, first one, and then two, and so on. Another important use of for loops is to repeat a specific process a set number of times. And this is done through combining it with the range function. The range function generates a sequence of numbers. As an example, range from 0 to 10 sets a sequence that goes from 0, 1, 2, all the way up until the number 9. When we use range, we start counting at the number in the first position, in this case, 0. Then, when we reach the number in the second position, it tells us where to stop. That number is excluded, so in this case, where the number is 10, the sequence only goes up until 9. An important detail about the range function is that if we don't provide a start point, it automatically starts from 0. 10 represents the stop point. Since the stop point is excluded, the numbers included in the sequence start at 0 and end at 9. A sequence that starts at 0 and ends at 9 will iterate 10 times. Let's run a for loop that incorporates the range function. We'll use range to ask Python to repeat an action 10 times, and then we'll indicate the action we want to repeat. This action is printing an error message that indicates cannot connect to the destination. Let's run this. Using a for loop with the range function allowed us to repeat the same error message 10 times instead of typing it over and over again ourselves. In this video, we learn about the syntax and the structure of iterative statements and work with for loops as an example. In the next video, we'll cover another type of iterative statement, the while loop. Previously, we introduced iterative statements in Python and focused on for loops. An iterative statement is code that repeatedly executes a set of instructions. In this video, we'll explore another type of iterative statement, the while loop. When we use for loops, the code repeatedly executed based on a specified sequence. While loops still repeatedly execute, but this repetition is based on a condition. As long as the condition is true, the loop continues to execute. But when it becomes false, the while loop stops. This while loop, for example, sets a condition where the variable time must be less than or equal to 10. This means it will keep running until the variable time is greater than 10. Similar to the for loop, a while loop has a header. It consists of the keyword while the condition, and a colon. 
The while loop starts with the keyword while. The keyword while signals the beginning of a while loop, and it's followed by the condition that evaluates to a Boolean value of either true or false. The condition contains the loop variable. This variable is used to control the number of loop iterations. However, there is an important distinction in the variables used in for and while loops. With while loops, the variable isn't created within the loop statement itself. Before writing the while loop, you need to assign the variable. Then, you'll be able to reference it in the loop. When the condition containing the loop variable evaluates to true, the loop iterates. If it does not, then the loop stops. This condition will evaluate to true while the variable time is less than or equal to 10. Finally, the loop header ends with a colon. Just like a for loop, a while loop has an indented body that consists of the actions to take while the loop iterates. The intention of this code is to print the value of a variable that represents the time and increase its value by 2 until it becomes greater than 10. This means the first action in this while loop is to simply print the current value of the time variable. Since while loops do not include a sequence to iterate through, we have to explicitly define how the loop variable changes in the body of the while loop. For example, in this while loop, we increase the loop variable time by 2 every iteration. This is because we only want to print the time every 2 minutes. So this while loop prints out all even numbers less than or equal to 10. Now that we know the basics of while loops, let's explore a practical example. Imagine we have a limitation on how many devices a user can connect to. We can use a while loop to print a message when the user has reached their maximum number of connected devices. Let's create a while loop for this. Before we start our while loop, we need to assign values to two variables. First, we'll set the maximum value of connected devices to 5. Then, we'll set our loop variable, we'll use i for this, and set it to a value of 1. Unlike with for loops, with while loops, we set this variable outside of the loop. Next, we'll create the header of our while loop. In this case, the condition is that the first variable is less than the second variable. Those variables are the loop variable i and max devices. Since we know the value of max devices is 5, we can understand that this loop will run as long as the current value of i is less than 5. Then we indicate what we want our while loop to do. Because this loop runs as long as the user can still connect to devices, we'll first have it print a user can still connect to additional devices message. After this, with each iteration, we'll increment i by 1. When the loop repeats, it will use the new value of the i variable. Python will exit the loop when i is no longer less than 5. Let's also print a message when this happens. We stop indenting because this next action occurs outside of the loop. Then, we'll print user has reached maximum number of connected devices. OK, we're ready to run this. Because of the loop, the first message prints a total of four times. The loop stops when the value of i increments to 5. At this point, it exits the loop and prints the second message. Well, when you combine this new understanding of for and while loops with what you already know about conditional statements and variables, you have a lot of options in Python. Great work.